Daniel Day, known as Dapper Dan, was born in 1944 in Harlem, New York. Dan was described as a natural-born hustler, with interests ranging from fashion to journalism to gambling. In this video, we will talk about Dapper Dan who went from fashion industry pariah to Gucci God. Hello, and welcome to Fashiony Magazine. Before we begin the video, don't forget to hit the like button, share the video, and subscribe to the channel. His mother was a stay-at-home mom, while his father worked three jobs to get by. Day and his three siblings and sisters would walk down to the neighboring Harlem River with holes in their shoes to make mud models since they couldn't buy toys. Dan worked for the Harlem-based journal 40 Acres and a Mule in the late 1960s, where he commented on themes ranging from gentrification to pop culture. Dan then proceeded on vacation to Africa, seeing numerous countries, including Kenya, Uganda, Nigeria, and Ethiopia. During this trip, Dan had the idea for his trademark, which he described simply as the Africanization of the premium European brand. Dan started selling apparel out of his vehicle after returning to New York in 1974 and eventually built his first store in 1982, which was open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Day's rising popularity was a double-edged sword. By the late 1980s, the shop was being raided on a regular basis by the authorities. Mike Tyson and fellow boxer Mitch Green were pictured fighting outside the store in 1988 with Tyson wearing one of Day's Fendi jackets. Another search ensued, and the authorities took not only the equipment, but also the materials and photographs that served as the only extant documents of the works he created. Day and his son, and brand manager, Jelani has been attempting to catalog his remaining items in recent years. Dapper Dan's boutique operated on a made-to-order basis, this method comprised a number of monogrammed and wholesale goods purchased from department shops and used to create the designer's distinctive ready-to-wear and accessories. Dan experimented with a variety of materials and procedures, becoming one of the first to perfect screen printing on leather. Dan's designs were developed without the consent of businesses. Among his favorite labels to recreate were Gucci, Fendi, and Louis Vuitton. Fur-lined coats and functional features like double pockets and durable materials were standouts from Dan's store. With these iconic shapes, the designer gained an ever-growing following, solidifying his name as a rapidly developing high-fashion brand. Dan became one of the genre's favorites and most frequent designers with the development of hip-hop in the 1980s. Dan engaged himself in the realms of music and fashion by working with musicians and groups like LL Cool G. Big Daddy Kane, and Salt and Papa via large silhouettes and buzzy monogram designs. Despite his high-profile clients, the designer's use of unlawful trademarks and monograms became the subject of counterfeiting raids and lawsuits. Dan was eventually hit with a slew of lawsuits from premium labels as a result of fashion's stringent copyright restrictions. Dan was forced to liquidate his Harlem store in 1992 due to escalating legal bills and frequent counterfeit raids by federal investigators. Dan was blacklisted from the mainstream fashion industry after the closure of his store, a fact that did not seem to have any effect on the designer's legacy. Dan soon started dressing private customers, the most renowned of whom was a professional boxer, Floyd Mayweather. Dan's bodacious, hip-hop-influenced style became a fashion standard in the early 2000s. Dan re-emerged into the world of luxury fashion in the early 2010s with high-profile collaborations and notable celebrity appearances. Gucci's creative director, Alessandro Michiel, mentioned a dapper Dan jacket made for Olympian Diane Dixon in 2017. Though Michiel did not specifically acknowledge Dan, the startling likeness between the two jackets prompted a series of collaborations between the two fashion powerhouses. In 2017, Gucci engaged Dan's assistants for a collaboration range of menswear that showcased Dapper Dan's unique codes via colorful accessories and desired monogram pieces. Dan was also involved with notable Met Gala looks, dressing Ashley Graham, 
Regina Hall, and Carly Kloss in special Gucci X Dapper Dan gowns. Dapper Dan has shown that he is a powerful tastemaker, designer, and artist. Whether he is dressing the most popular musicians or showing off his unique style at the biggest fashion events. The discriminatory stereotype that black consumers depreciate expensive products is progressively fading. Last year, the musician Nicki Minaj created a capsule collection with Fendi, and after years of ignoring him, Gucci hired the rapper Gucci Mane to head a campaign. However, as recent scandals demonstrate, fashion's racial issue persists. In 2018, a galawank shaped tchotchke was on display in the windows of a New York Prada retailer. When Gucci was forced to pull a balaclava polo neck sweater from its stores in 2019 because it was believed to resemble blackface, they convened a meeting in Harlem with the company's president and CEO, Marco Bizzari, to hold the brand responsible. He claims that luxury brands seek quick access to black culture, sometimes without properly understanding its significance or history. Of course, Day still lives in Harlem, and some of his new clients are second and third generation Dapper Dan fans. Day mentored artist Asap Ferg, whose actual name is Darold Ferguson Jur, and his father, Darold SR, worked at the shop at its peak. Day, now in his eighth decade, is at peace with change and is constantly reinventing himself. Sony is developing a long overdue biopic, which he will executive produce. He fully intends to continue experimenting with new hustles. This is all from today's video. Thanks for watching. And if you like the video, give us big thumbs and subscribe to the channel.